Good evening, this is James Cook of the University of Maine at Augusta, and we're going to do a walkthrough tonight uh, with UCI Net6 and generating a QAP correlation. I'm going to generate for you uh, an error as well that you might find in UCI Net6, and for once I'm going to tell you why not to worry about it. Now, I'm going to be working with a small matrix of data. It's actual data regarding 10 actual members of the 112th Congress. Uh, I've only restricted it in size so that you can uh, follow the particular example. Uh, I'm going to display some of the matrices that we're going to be working with. And if you're in my class, you've already figured out how to transform two mode information into one mode information. So I'm going to skip that step of transforming and I'm going to work with my sample Congress data again, which is real. The first matrix of which refers to 10 individuals in this one mode uh, uh, network. Uh, take a look at my title, sample Congress age, uh, and then EuchDist, which refers to Euclidean distance or absolute distance. It's an absolute distance in age matrix. So COBOL, who stands for Howard COBOL, uh, is zero years different in age from Howard Coble. Wow, that's kind of trivial. But if we go off the diagonal where all values are zero, we can find out that uh, Trent, uh, Howard Coble is uh, 26 years away in age from Trent Franks, uh, 21 years away in age from Bob Goodlot, 16 years away from uh, Gerald Nadler, uh, and 24 years of age away from uh, Shelley Pingree, a representative of Maine. We could go and we could list all of these. There are a number of pieces of information here. Uh, note for data checking that we're going to find that all the members are in alphabetical order across rows and across columns. This is important because we're going to be looking at other matrices as well. Why would we think about age distance? Because age distance tells us uh, if we believe in the theory of homophily, which we've covered in previous uh, course lectures. Uh, if we believe in homophily, then we think that people who are closer in age should be more likely to form relationships with one another. If they're in Congress together and they're forming relationships, they might do things like co-sponsor uh, legislation together, vote together, at least share ideas with each other, caucus with one another in some way. What's another meaningful variable that we might measure? A variable is something that varies, remember. So that makes, hang on a second, this, that makes this matrix here a variable. This matrix is a variable. And each of these cells is an observation of the variable for a particular case. And the case is a dyad, a pair of two individuals. Okay. So the case is the dyad. There are a lot of dyads in here, a lot of pairs. Each value is an observation for that dyad of what? The variable, the variable of difference in age. And correlation talks about the direction of effect between different variables. Now let's take a look at another variable, which means another matrix describing relationships, uh, possible relationships in the Congress. We'll take a look at uh, gender. Okay. Here we have dichotomous information, uh, ones and zeros. That's what a dichotomy is. It's something or it isn't. And the something that is measured here is same uh, gender. We have Howard Coble is a man. Howard Coble is a man, same gender. Howard Coble, Trent Franks same gender. Howard Coble and Vicki Hartzler, a representative, or Shelley Pingree, or Maxine Waters, uh, not the same gender. But Maxine Waters and Vicki Hartzler are the same gender, as well as uh, Maxine Waters and Martha Roby. Okay, two members of Congress of the same gender. One. One answers the question yes. Zero answers the question no. Notice checking our data, that we have the same individuals in the same order. 
always good when you're about to run a correlation that compares two variables. It's a second variable. We're going to look at five variables, so let's make this a little quicker. Sample Congress. Uh, data. Uh, committees. Now you can see by the suffix, if you've run UCI Net a while, that I did a row affiliations command in order to get this information. I had some information on what committees they were on, and I found out that Trent Franks and Bob Goodlot uh, share two committees with one another. Uh, Howard Coble and Shelley Pingree share no committees together. So there are zeros, ones, and twos here for the how many individuals? For the 10 individuals here and all their possible relations. The variable here is number of shared committee memberships. And each of these cells features a value that's an observation for the case, which is a particular dyad. Let's take a look at a fourth variable. Party. Not the same as gender. And, but it is like gender in that it's a dichotomous variable. If two people are of the same party, they have a one in the cell that refers to uh, their particular dyad. So um, uh, Bob Goodlot and uh, Vicki Hartzler are both Republicans, so they both end up uh, in their cell that's referring to the relationship between them having a one. Uh, Trent Franks and Shelley Pingree, definitely different party. If you ever read any of their work in the congressional record, that comes out pretty clearly. Uh, so they have a zero. Uh, Shelley Pingree, on the other hand, and uh, Gerald Nadler, definitely of the same party. Uh, and you'll find that there's a one representing the relationship between the two of them. Great. Only one more variable to look at before we run the, uh, the uh, correlation. And it's important, as I've done this, to make sure, go through this, do this. It's only taking a few minutes, as you can see. But when I do that, um, I'm, I'm looking and I'm seeing little things. Are there only 10 uh, uh, rows, 10 columns? Is everybody in the same order? Are there extra little bits of information added in, because if you don't get those things nailed down, if you don't have the exact same numbers, the exact same labels, and you don't have good data in there, maybe somebody you put text in there in the cells instead, X's, or you know, your cat walks across the keyboard, it happens. And then you end up with junk, and then you end up with an error message. Oh, it won't run. Unless you go back and look at your data, you won't know why. Um, so do check as you go. We're going to be taking a look at PACs. A PAC is a political action committee. I've just picked a few PACs. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of them. And uh, any two members of Congress will tend to overlap in some. But I I've just looked at a handful of them. Uh, and you can see that you, know, you can have different numbers of overlaps uh, based on how many uh, PACs in common, people receive campaign contributions from. Uh, political action committees donate to members of Congress. So Trent Franks and uh, Shelley Pingree, although they're not of the same party, do receive uh, campaign contributions from the same PAC, from the same political action committee. I see again, looking at this matrix, that we've got uh, all the rows in the right order, all the columns in the right order, and every cell contains a piece of information that looks like it's in the right format. I'm excited because I'm about to run a correlation matrix. But when I do that, uh, of course, I have to be thinking, at least if I'm uh, theoretically informed and not just doing something called data dredging, I have to be thinking about, well, what is it I want to explain? What's the outcome when I think about age and I think about gender and I think about committees, I think about political party and I think about political action committees? What am I trying to explain variation in? You know, why some people uh, have more uh, shared with another person in politics? What, what it was shared what? Well, I'm going to pick political action committee money here. Uh, and, and, and this is uh, 
a, a nice variable here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, well, what predicts that? Is it party? Is it gender? Do people, men, get political action information from some sources and women get it from another? Uh Hmm, maybe it's age. Maybe the younger generation and the older generation in Congress kind of have different ways of looking at things. You know, the old fogies and the young Turks uh, could be being on a particular committee and having some kind of business coming up before your committee. Wow, that might matter. All of those might matter. I could tell a story about all of those. I don't trust stories because if you're a good enough storyteller, you can make almost any story make sense. But is there a real relationship in this data? Uh, if you're in my class, I'm asking you to go and find out for your own set of data. But let's look at mine right now. Let's run a QAP correlation. To do that, I'm going to go over to Tools. And I'm going to let uh, UCI Net run this for me. I'm going to go to Testing Hypotheses. I'm going to select Dyadic QAP. Quadratic Assignment Procedure. We talked about that in lecture last week. And I'm going to hit Quap Correlation. Then I am going to browse for some uh, matrices. Now, if you are looking for those and you've got a lot of files to work from, make sure you know which ones you're working with. But then hit the Control key as you select. And you can select more than one at once, which is super handy. I want to get the pack information. Now, what else am I missing? Committees. And I have to make sure I pick just the right ones because there's transformed data in here and everything. So write down exactly what the names are. I have to do, oh, what's the last one? Party. Okay, I think I've got them all. And I think they're the right titles. Let me double check. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm going to select them. Now, they're loaded in here in the list of matrices to correlate. Uh, you could go back and browse and pick some more. And so, you know, whenever you want to change things, you have to hit that clear button uh, to start over again. There's a, a random number seed, and that is, if you recall last week, because we are not just going to look at the correlations, but we're going to look at the statistical significance of them. The P value. P stands for proportion. And it's the proportion, the share, uh, it would be the percentage if you multiply by 100. It's the share of uh, results as big as we find for, for the actual correlations that we would find by chance alone. Okay. So if 95% of the time, by chance alone, you'd get a correlation that big with a random matrix, and yeah, if you look at the number of permutations... In this case, uh, UCINet is actually going to generate 5,000 randomly permuted, switched around matrices, and then see if it gets a correlation like that again, just randomly. Um, if that happens 95% of the time, then you, you know that, well, your, your, your result, your correlation is, is pretty chancy. It doesn't seem to be different than chance. If you get a result that says that, that is 0.5, which means 50% of the time, uh, by chance alone, you get a result that big. I mean, that's like flipping a coin. You can't trust that. If, on the other hand, and this is the general standard, you get a result that says, hey, UCI net generated 5,000 random matrices, and only 5% of the time in those random matrices did you get a result that... It was a correlation as big as the one you saw there for these two variables, then, wow, you can say, hey, it's pretty unlikely that that is something that happened by chance alone. And the lower that proportion is, the greater statistical confidence you have that this is something real and not something that would just occur by chance alone. That's what the uh, p-value is, and I'm about to show you both. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do that by uh, hitting OK. Now, I get an error. Oh, dear. Why is that? Why do I get an error? Some of you have written to me and you said, I've gotten an error. Oh, no, I can't do anything. I have to stop right here. Fortunately, you don't. 
I'm going to ask you not to worry about it. The reason in your computer that that might happen is that when you are saving your Quap Measures table, if you look down here at this dialog, you're doing it in a folder that for some reason you don't have administrative privileges to access. That's highfalutin. It's complicated. Um, and you'd have to fix that on your computer. But the good news is that UCI Net is doing two things. It would put the information in some kind of table and it would generate a text log file, which is just about to be created, even though it's telling me there's an error. Oh, here it is. Okay. There's a lot of numbers here. Don't, don't worry. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go down all the way to the bottom. Okay. And you're going to see two tables of information. One that says QAP correlations and the other one that says QAP p-values. Well, the table that says is underneath the, the title p-values is p-values. Um, these are the things that we want to be 0 0.05 or less to say that they're statistically significant. And then we have the actual correlations in a table above. Um, now you'll notice that the rows they spell out the entire name of the variable. And I named some really long variables. Always good, because then you can remember what they mean, right? If you just type in three letters, who knows what that'll mean. So that's great. Um, oh, what about the columns? They say sample, 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 sample. Well, each of my variables begins with the five uh, letters, S-A-M-P-L-E. Uh, and, and that's what sample means. It just means that it's using the first five letters of the variable. Uh, so how do I know which is which? Oh, fortunately, they're numbered as well. So I know if I'm looking over at the left hand side that sample Congress data v2, my second version of it, because I screwed up the first time, uh, PACs, oh, PACs, political action committees, a row affiliation. Yeah, that's how I generated it. OK, so I know that's number three. Oh, and there's a three in the columns. Great. What could be simpler? That's what I'm going to work with. Uh, so I can look and I can see where are their positive correlations and where are their negative correlations. Let's let's increase the view, uh, the uh, font size, so that we can take a look with a little bit more detail. Okay. So we're going to look at that with a little bit more detail now. There's some negative correlations uh, between variable 2 and variable 1. Between age, sim age difference and committee difference. Oh, okay. So that means the more different you are in age, the greater the, the age difference is, the more different you are in age, the less different you are to share the same committees. Oh, kind of like homophily, right? Um, here it's showing that there's age segregation in committees. That's cool. That's not our dependent variable, but that's cool. Um, let's look at our dependent variable. What's our dependent variable again? What's the thing we want to explain? PACs. Why is it that some members of Congress share more uh, PAC contribution sources in common? Political Action Committee money sources. Well, there's one group for which they're less common, and that's what? Um, row four. Interestingly, interestingly, we have a negative correlation there. What does that mean? It means that two people of the same gender are less likely to share PACs than two people of different genders. Wow. So much for gender-based coalitions in the Congress, right? Well, first of all, remember that this is only for 10 people. But second, and really importantly, uh, look at the size of that correlation. It's kind of small. Is it statistically significant? To find out, let's head down to the bottom. This, this is the correlation we're talking about. The corresponding row for PACs and column for column number four. Oh, there's the p-value. So you see, it's the corresponding cell in the table. And that's 0.392. It's saying, oh, there's a 39.2% chance that if you generate 5,000 random uh, uh, matrices that you'd end up with a, a result like that. So, yeah, 
pretty big chance that that's just occurring by chance. It doesn't meet our stringent threshold uh, in this case, uh, which is a 0 0.05 or less for statistical significance. There's another failure in statistical significance, and that's for age, <laughs> at least in our small sample. Okay, um, age just differences don't seem to uh, statistically significantly uh, determine similarity in getting PAC money. Oh, and look up here. What's the size of that correlation? 0 0.001, right? Um, if that's really as close as you can get to zero in three digits and not be zero. So no wonder it's not statistically significant. You know, I mean, the chances are half that you're going to get a result like that, <laughs> that is uh, that, that positive and that big. So that's pretty much a wash. But if we look again, um, pardon, if we look again at that third row, this is our dependent variable, and we'll look interested, therefore, in all the correlations in that row with all the other variables okay, and the statistical significance of them. Oh look, there are two values that are beneath 0 0.05, one of them barely, and that's with five, same party. Okay, and the second with number two, ah, the number of committees you're on. Okay, so we know those two are statistically significant. That means UCI net tells us, you know, by chance alone, the chances are not very big that you would get something this big, a correlation this big. How big? For, uh, what's number two? Number two is committees. For the correlation between committee overlap and PAC overlap, the number of committees that you're sitting on in common and the PAC sources that you get in common, that's a correlation of 0 0.406. That's positive, and that's fairly large. The more committees you share with another member of Congress, the more your money sources are the same. The more the gravy train looks like it's coming from the same place. Interesting. Okay, Just for these 10 individuals, maybe your results might be different. Uh, if you were to look at PAC contributions as your dependent variable, and if you're in my class, that's not your dependent variable, uh, for your upcoming assignment. Uh, on the other hand, for row number five, we have a positive correlation of 0 0.316. What is number five? Same party. You're in the same party. Yes, there is a statistically significant relationship, uh, a positive correlation. People in the same party get money from the same PACs. People from the same committees get money from the same PACs more often than those of different parties or different committees. That's meaningful. If you care about politics, if you want to understand um, why it is that uh, money goes in different directions, uh, what it's associated with, you're beginning to get an answer here. You could do the same thing with a dependent variable of roll call votes, in which people are voting to pass bills. Bills which have to do with laws, laws which affect you, how you live your life, uh, how you're allowed to live your life how you might not be allowed to live your life. Quap correlations can matter in distinguishing between stories, and you can tell a story about how any of these variables might affect PAC money, uh, and what's going on in the real world. I encourage you to get your hands dirty now, uh, start mucking about with your actual data, which is going to result in matrices that are a fair a bit larger, but in the end is going to result in a set of two tables for correlations and for p-values that look very much like this. And this is what I'm going to want you to interpret in your finer, final major assignment. It's the hard part. Um, the rest of it, describing the actual matrix uh, that you create, describing the network, is something that uh, you've done before, and you should be able to handle again. I really look forward, if you're in my class, uh, to reading your work and discovering something new about the world. 
So get to it. And please get in touch with me if you have any trouble.